When the Earth suddenly warmed 415,000 years ago, parts of Greenland melted, and seas rose to levels higher than they are today. Then early Neanderthals arrived in Europe, and the warm temperatures abruptly dropped to Ice Age conditions again. However, humans are tropical creatures, and we have spent most of our evolutionary history in warm climates. For the first time, hominins living north in higher latitudes faced freezing temperatures, shorter days that limited foraging time, snow that made hunting more difficult, and icy wind chill that exacerbated heat loss from their bodies. Neanderthals lived in glacial climates in Eurasia between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago. The process of evolution from proto-Neanderthal to classic Neanderthal is known as Neanderthalization. In comparison to their forefathers and to us, they had short, strong limbs and wide, muscular bodies that were well suited to producing and retaining heat. Even with their cold adapted bodies, these proto-Neanderthals were held captive by their tropical ancestry. Recent research has found that changes in the genes regulating melanin would be an important survival adaptation, for hominins in cold climates. Indeed, some of the genes regulating skin, hair and eye pigmentation are almost one million years old. Nevertheless, because of our tropical heritage, we would still be unable to live in cold places, unless we developed ways to cope with the temperatures. Humans are the ultimate adapters, thriving in nearly every ecological niche imaginable. The ability of humans to adapt behaviorally was critical to human evolutionary success. Humans have less physical climatic adaptation than other primates, and behavioral adaptation is more rapid and adaptable than biological adaptation. Neanderthals lacked the thick fur of other mammals in glacial Europe, such as woolly rhinos and musk oxen, for example. To cope, Neanderthals developed complex culture, and hunted beavers. Nonetheless these Stone Age beavers were not the cute and cuddly ones you may be familiar with, they were big, and mean-looking. There is ample evidence that these hominins hunted animals, ranging from cut marks on bones to a horse, shoulder blade pierced by a wooden spear. These findings are consistent with studies of modern foragers, which show that people in colder regions rely more on animal prey than those in warmer climates. Meat is high in the calories and fats needed to keep warm. The study demonstrates that middle Pleistocene humans systematically fed on these smaller animals, resulting in a more varied diet than previously thought. Previously, it was thought that hominins of this age ate mostly large mammals like bovids and rhinoceroses. Until now, cut marks on Paleolithic beaver bones had only been identified on isolated bones. Their research has now revealed the long-term strategy behind the exploitation of these animals for the first time. According to the cut mark distribution pattern, beaver may have been targeted for both their skins and their meat. It's worth noting that the beaver continues to primarily represent young adults. The researchers examined the approximately 400,000-year-old bones of at least 94 beavers, excavated several decades ago with magnifying glasses and digital microscopes. They were able to identify cut marks from stone tools, that indicated intensive use of the carcasses as a result of this. It's worth noting that the remains mostly depict young adult beavers. This suggests that early Neanderthals would have purposefully hunted inexperienced, but fully grown and fat-rich animals. Anthropologists believe these humans not only survived, but dominated northern climates, despite their evolutionary origins in, and thus biological proclivity for, warmer environments. These early Neanderthals in Europe hunted beavers and bears for their pelts 400,000 years ago, but also were driven to cannibalism and other heinous acts by when ice ages descended. In fact, archaeologists may have discovered one of the world's oldest cold cases at this location, a skull fragment discovered in a Spanish cave from an ancient murder victim whose head was bashed in. A partial skull discovered in a bone pit in Spain, dating to 400,000 years ago may have belonged to one of the world's oldest murder victims. The skull has two similar shaped wounds, which were most likely caused by another human attacking the person with a spear or hand axe. The skull was discovered in the Spanish mountains, which are laced with limestone caves, sinkholes, and tunnels. 
In 1987, researchers descended a chimney into one of those caves and discovered a massive bone bed. Several dozen human fossils have been scraped from sediments found at the bottom of the vertiginous 50-foot shaft that forms the central part of the pit over the last three decades. According to researchers, the cave is effectively a mass grave, because thousands of teeth and bone fragments appear to have been deliberately dumped there. These fossils date back more than 400,000 years, and were most likely left by early Neanderthals or their forefathers. The site is one of the world's most important paleontological treasure troves, providing critical insights into how human evolution progressed in Europe. The Pit of the Bones is home to thousands of skeletal fragments, from at least 28 people. Scientists are unsure why so many bodies were buried in this area, but many believe it is one of the world's oldest burial pits. Other members of the social group apparently deposited the bodies in the pit. Scientists excavating at the site discovered a skull fragment in 1990, but other matching pieces of the skull were discovered years later. They painstakingly reconstructed the skull after many years, revealing two holes poked through it. The skull belonged to an unknown sex of a young adult. The team analyzed the chemical makeup and structure of the bone around the holes to solve this ancient murder mystery, and discovered that the head wounds had not healed before death, implying that the man or woman died as a result of his injuries. While it's possible that the hominin fell down the chimney and hit his head on a limestone boulder, the researchers believe it's unlikely that he sustained two such wounds from an accidental fall. Furthermore, the slow settling of the ground over hundreds of thousands of years produced insufficient energy to cause the person's head wounds. That only leaves one logical conclusion, based on the similarities in shape and size of both wounds, researchers believe they are the result of repeated blows with the same object inflicted by another individual, possibly in a face-to-face -face encounter. A blow to the head with a wooden club or a stone hand axe are two possible scenarios. Nevertheless, while ancient Neanderthals may have cannibalized and butchered one another in Spain, this is one of the few sites with evidence of ancient humans using lethal force against other humans during the Paleolithic period. Indeed, researchers have recently discovered an unexpected twist in this story at this Ice Age refugia in southern Europe. In another study, archaeologists argue that early Neanderthal bones from the 400,000-year-old site in northern Spain may show seasonal damage from slowing their metabolism to hibernate. According to the researchers, these bones exhibit cycles of interrupted growth and healing. Seasonal damage in bone fossils in Spain, suggests that Neanderthals and their forefathers followed the same strategy as cave bears to survive the harsh winters according to evidence from bones discovered at one of the world's most important fossil sites, our ancestors may have dealt with extreme cold hundreds of thousands of years ago by sleeping through the winter. The scientists contend that lesions and other signs of damage in the early human fossilized bones, are the same as those found in the bones of other hibernating animals. These findings imply that our forefathers dealt with the harsh winters of the time, by slowing their metabolisms and sleeping for months. Researchers contend that the fossils discovered there exhibit seasonal variations, implying that bone growth was disrupted for several months of the year. They believe these early humans were in metabolic states that allowed them to survive for long periods of time in frigid conditions with limited supplies of food and adequate stores of body fat. They hibernated, which caused disruptions in bone development, during the frigid glacial period. The researchers admit that the idea sounds like science fiction, but they point out that many mammals, including primates like bush babies and lemurs, also hibernate. This suggests that the genetic basis and physiology for such a hypometabolism may be conserved in a variety of mammalian species, including humans. According to the study, the pattern of lesions found in human bones at Simmer Cave corresponds to lesions found in hibernating mammals' bones, including cave bears. A strategy of hibernation would have been the only solution for them to survive having to spend months in a cave due to the frigid conditions, the study's authors write. They also point out that the remains of a hibernating cave bear were discovered in the pit, lending credence to the idea that humans did the same to survive the frigid conditions and food scarcity as did the cave bears. Several counter-arguments are examined by the authors. Despite living in similarly harsh, cold conditions, 
modern people from Greenland do not hibernate. So, why did the Neanderthal cave dwellers do so? The answer is that fatty fish and reindeer fat provide food for Inuit people during the winter, eliminating the need for them to hibernate. In contrast, the area around the Simmer site would not have provided nearly enough food half a million years ago. In the words of the authors, the aridification of Iberia then could not have provided enough fat-rich food for the Neanderthals during the harsh winter, making them resort to cave hibernation. Large mammals, such as bears, do not hibernate because their large bodies cannot lower their core temperature sufficiently. Instead, they fall into a shallower sleep known as torpor. In such a state, the energy demands of the Simmer people's human-sized brains would have remained very high, posing an additional survival problem during torpor. However, the idea is intriguing, and could be tested by examining the genomes of Neanderthals and Denisovans for signs of genetic changes associated with torpor physiology. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our human history. Until next time, stay curious, and stay questioning.